So we've got just a few minutes here. Uh, how many of you tested on Ancestry? All right, good job. How many want to test on Ancestry? Okay, there you go. Okay, so I, you can hear me okay, like if I talk you normally. Try that. <laughs> so any questions while I'm waiting for the time to start at one o'clock? Don't mind taking questions you might have. Ancestry has a sale on right now. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to expire, but it's, uh, I think, $59. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad deal right now. How long is it? Do you know how long is that? Is that like one year's use on Ancestry or what's the uh, It's not anything to do with Ancestry's uh, documents. It's only your DNA test it covers. It gives you access to your DNA results and a few of the tools and so forth. That's right. How much is that right now? Um, I think I saw an ad for it. It's like $59. Okay. Yeah, I don't know when it expires, so they do kind of expire, but it'll get you started. They do stuff around the holidays all the time. So. That's true, but they're early this year. Uh, people haven't been testing. So I there was... Um, I think my heritage, I think it was until the 11th. Let's see, what is today? The 12th? 12th. So I think it expired yesterday, but it was like $39. I have never seen my heritage at $39. So. And when did you see that on my heritage? Uh, yes, it expired yesterday. So, but I think Ancestry was. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Question. I have the email and it says the $59 ends. September 4th at midnight Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> no, this year's September 4th. That's, that's the last email I had of an offer because I thought, oh, I'll look it up because I get those emails all the time. Yeah. That's the most recent email I have. Huh. They have this stuff around Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas and, and they do that Black Friday thing too. That's what's going on right now. Okay, it's time. Okay, I hope when you leave a class today, you will say that you understand why you should use Ancestry. It should be a tool in your toolbox. Now, I want to clarify, I am an obsessive DNA person. I test, I do classes, I do all kinds of different things constantly. I do not get paid for it. I am not an Ancestry paid promoter. But I do know that there are certain companies everyone should be in, and this is one. So I'm going to give you my presentation, and hopefully I've convinced you. Okay, too far away. Good? Okay. All right. Number one reason more people test on Ancestry than any other company, 22 million people. Now, to give you kind of an idea of what that relates to, the last time I looked, I had about 58,000 matches. Now, I don't know about you, but there's no way I'm running 58,000 matches down to the how they match me, right? So it's the largest company of family trees. And if I've learned anything in doing DNA, is that you have to have a family tree. And you need to, you can make a free tree on Ancestry. So even if you just know, say your parents, grandparents, and great grandparents, put them on that tree, a link your DNA to you, um, because that's the only way you're, you're going to be able to get the full advantage of Ancestry. <clears throat> so it does require a DNA test. It does require a family tree. And it does require you linking your DNA to that family tree. That's important. It is easy to use. It really, it truly is easy to use. They offer a variety of tools to help you. They, I don't think I did that. Did I do that? Whoa, okay, now my ears are ringing. Hopefully you guys are still okay. Party, but. While you recover, my wife just found her latest 
message said that $59 was good through November 23rd. Thank you. November 23rd. Okay. I'm going to be cautiously going forward. Okay. Um, they have through lines, cluster. Am I too loud? Yes. Yeah. Maybe I think she's out under her speaker here. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, I you guys didn't lose your hearing on this. I'm going to try this side. We'll see how this goes. Right. Okay. I'm going to have to turn my back to you. Apologize for that. I could see it a little bit over here. So we uh, have uh, the law department will not access your DNA without a court order. So it's one of the companies that does use privacy. Um, Color dots, shared DNA tool, which both of those are really necessary. You have ethnicity breakdown for your chromosomes, your ethnicity, which can be really helpful. Um, you have privacy for matches in trees. When you have your DNA, you can see who you match. You can see their trees if they made it public, which is what you really want to do. You don't want to, living people are always um, privatized on ancestry, but your matches have got to do the same thing for it to be totally 100% usable data. You do have control of your information. So this is what your page looks like. This is mine when I open up my DNA summary page. As you can see, whoops, um, you kind of, some of you were, you were at the family tree DNA, you saw an ethnicity breakdown. Well, here's another one. It doesn't match family tree DNA. Don't worry about it. Take what you can use out of it. That's the, the message. You can see 27% Scotland, 21% Ireland, and I have four other regions. So there's, a, a, if I hit that discovery, your DNA, it's gonna bring up more information. Here's my matches. Here's my through lines. And there's a new thing that they've added is get ancestry's dna traits now i have not done that this is what's on the traits that if you pay that little extra money then that's what you can get and i don't have any problems if you want to take a picture of the slide i'm not you know I'm, it's not copyrighted yes online or anything uh, all you have to do is sign on, make a free Ancestry account uh, at Ancestry. You don't have to do a tree or anything else. You can get all this information. Okay. Yep. Just answer it, Ancestry.com. Okay. Yep. All right. So those are the tests that they're doing under the Ancestry DNA test. Now, this was a sale they had. You can see it's expired. I didn't even take advantage of it at $10. I really don't want to know whether I have the correct nutrients, endurance, <laughs> fitness. I'm in my getting close to my eighth year, 80. <laughs> so I don't need to know all that. So if I was younger, maybe it would be something I'd be interested in. All right. So Ancestry has what they call a learning hub. And that's something everybody can take advantage of. Make a free account, go on, and you go to the Ancestry DNA Learning Hub. You will see uh, webinars. You will see um, papers that tells you how to do things. Um, just about everything possible. Um, multiple videos, multiple articles on DNA. So th this is a learning tool for you to learn about Ancestry.com before you test. All right, the important thing when you decide to go ahead and do your DNA, and even as you're starting this free account, you wanna set up your DNA profile or your profile on Ancestry. Um, so you have, it tells you, you can set it up. So only the matches see you or everyone 
and this is just a blank. This isn't mine, by the way. But you know, matches is what you're interested in. So set that up as matches. Then your matches can see you. Here is how to get notification. You have to subscribe, give them permission to contact you, whether it's by email or what. So that's important. And you whoops, did it again. You can also message uh, your matches on Ancestry. Now, let me tell you a secret. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Mostly, I think, because people don't know where to go to look for the message that's coming in from somebody. So they never check it. It's not like it's like comes out in a bright light and says you got a message. And I think some people, because of that, don't respond. But if you get on Ancestry DNA, check your messages every time you get on and answer. You know, that's the only way we can really help each other to go the extra step. All right, so remember this is an F, uh, estimate of my ethnicity. So it says that I'm Scottish, Irish, German, English, Sweden and Denmark and Norway. Uh, I got a little bit of everything. But what does it mean? This is something you can use because they give you community groups. These community groups say, they're not exactly matches, but they say that a lot of your DNA matches come from this area. Now, when you set up that profile, I have like Kansas on my profile. So that when people look at my profile, they're seeing Kansas. So they know that I'm from the Midwest. So people <coughs> from this area in the Midwest may contact me because we may have a link through this group. This is a cluster group. So you can see there is a link here that tells you how the DNA communities work. So it's telling me I connect to five DNA, our DNA communities. And there's a little more information when you use the arrows to drop down. Here's one that I dropped down for you to see. So this is Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, a little bit of Kentucky uh, in this area. And it says that it's called the Delaware Valley Texas Peak Midwest Settlers. And you can move this timeline to see when your ancestors come into this area. <clears throat> All right, so I want to give you this thought. The breakdown of your DNA by parent one and two. That's the newest thing that ancestry's given us. So do you have a parent that's tested? Can you get a parent to test? Do you have an aunt or uncle that's like, say, in their 90s that could test? You know, any of those older generations is going to help you. But if not, you're all's not lost. And the question is, how accurate? And I say depends because that is true. It depends on what you know about your family. What if you have a non-paternal event somewhere back second, third great grandparents? You're not gonna know that. So it might look odd. Is it hard if you have no parents to test? No, it's not. What it does, it gives you clues to which side your matches are on. All right, so I'm gonna move over here. Hopefully I won't cause that to go bonkers. Now I happened to figure out a variety of ways to figure out what was my paternal and maternal side. You can see I'm a, on the right, um, a little bit of everything of those two. But take a look at the breakdown as in a chart, paternal, maternal, and me, okay? 
So from Scottish, my paternal ancestor gave me 15 and my mother's side gave me 12. So that's where the 27 comes from. So let's go down to Germany because that was one of the ways I could determine which was parental one and two, what they were. All right, Germany, my mom doesn't have any. My, my dad's side has. Now with the paperwork, I, I can verify that. So I'm thinking, okay, that's clue one. That means this is my paternal side. Can I gather anything else from it? As you can see, Ireland and Scotland are not gonna be a clear cut one way or the other. Uh, England and, and uh, Northwest Europe is the same kind of thing. It's really not gonna give me a whole lot there. Sweden and Denmark, no. Norway, uh, maybe. And the reason I know maybe is I did living DNA and a few months ago, they offered what's called the Viking DNA test. I've suspected without any proof that my, my dad's line came from Vikings, not positive, like just wondering. So I put his DNA over on living DNA and paid a little extra to have, him, have them run the Viking DNA. And it says he's like 50% Viking DNA. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is probably paternal again. So I have two clues that's moving me to the paternal. So the next thing I have to look at is my matches. How do they match up with my selection? because I do select whether it's maternal or paternal. Right here, you see where it says edit parent? I can go in and hit edit and I can make this maternal just like that. I can switch back and forth to see which one brings me closest to the matches. Now you can see that I have I'm going to call it 19,000 paternal matches, and I've got 24,000 maternal. Okay. Now, out of the rest of them, they can't figure out which side they go on. They're, they're like unclaimed. Could be because we don't share enough DNA. Could be because they don't have any trees or any hints. There's so many reasons. I don't worry about it. But here's what it does give me. It tells me the story of that maternal ethnicity. And this is the only company that does this at this time. So this is my maternal grouping. And this is my paternal grouping. And you can see that I can get more off of it if I wanted to click down. So this is another thing that's kind of interesting. This is the locations of my DNA matches. And not every match. And does anybody want to gather why not all matches are showing up there? What did I tell you you had to do on your profile page? You have to pick a place that you're from. I did Kansas, right? So if you are a tester, you want to put the state you're from. You don't need to put the city, but the state will do. Or maybe let's say, you know, you were born in uh, Illinois, let's say, then you would want to put Illinois perhaps. Yes. Um, I've basically been a Kansas girl for way too many years. I would put my location at the present time, unless it's really unusual. In other words, if I just moved here, like a year ago, and I've been, you know, was born and raised in Illinois, I probably would put Illinois. So you have, that's going to have to be a decision for you. All right. This is another thing that's kind of interesting. This site alone is going to help me do something no other site has been able to help me do yet. 
but there's another step to this. What I did was, and you remember, I had both of my parents that had Scottish ancestors. So I know, I need to know, is there any additional information that I can get from that fact? So if you look here, this is the maternal. So on chromosome three, it's showing the bottom half of chromosome three all the way across as being Scottish, okay? So if I use DNA painter, um, even, um, I think DNA painter is probably the best place to go with this information. I can designate, I can do an ethnicity chart for my DNA and I can take that chromosome three the start and the ending of it and plug it into DNA Painter and mark my maternal as Scottish at chromosome three. Now, why would that be useful? Well, let's say that you and I both have Scottish ancestry. We are DNA match and your ethnicity says, hey, my maternal line's from Scotland too at that same chromosome level, let's compare. So we might be able to, to use that as additional research tool. Now, at the same time, I want you to take a look at my paternal. I had Scottish there. Do you see any Scottish on number three? No. My long line of Scottish ancestry on my paternal line comes on chromosome two. So now, I have two chromosomes from two separate parents. One on chromosome two is Scottish, that's from paternal, and on the maternal on chromosome three. But here's where it gets dicey. If you take a look at chromosome 17, nope, not 17. Uh, let's see, 22. Look what we have here. 21, I'm sorry, not 22, 21. Oh, nope, I'm, I'm making that wrong. That's 22 and this is 21. Didn't get that bottom one. Let's say for the sake of discussion, this is 22. And 22, and this was 22, what would you see? You would see that whole chromosome is gonna equal Scottish ancestry, both my maternal and paternal line. Now, I find that kind of fascinating and you guys might find it boring, but that's another thing you can do with ancestry DNA. And for $59, not a bad, not a bad deal. All right, so here again, we're gonna set up our account and do what we can do. You have the choices of color background. Uh, you can turn, like when you put a tree on, do you want to have hints? I would recommend yes. Um, and did you know that on Ancestry.com, even if you don't have a paid subscription, there's a lot of free records there. Don't want to get in that area. A lot of free records there. Because you can type in free for the question of getting records and they'll bring you up a whole list of free. So even though you don't have a paid Ancestry account, you can still get records. <clears throat> So here's the things that you need to do to complete your profile. You want to have your name and you can use a, an ID that's not your name. You can make up a name. It doesn't have to be your name. You can, I would recommend that you put the birth year, not the date or month, but birth year or somewhere close. Because when people look at DNA matches, they need to know whether you're older or younger or about the same age. You know, I showed uh, that chart on family tree DNA that shows that, you know, you need to know what generations you're matching at. So you wanna link your DNA to the tree. You, you, can either give you can either give your consent for research or not. Um, I participate in everything. Visibility, that doesn't mean you have to. Visibility, I have my DNA matches on, ethnicity estimate, I, I want my matches to see. I'm hoping that'll say, oh gosh, I got Scottish ancestry. I wonder if we have a shared match. So then you, you can download your DNA. 
and transfer it to family tree DNA, my heritage. Um, I think living DNA still accepts it, GenMatch. So there's a lot of places where you can take that DNA test that you spent $59 and have more fun at another site. So you can continually have fun. All right, so then you have to act, activate your DNA tree and it'll tell you yes, no. The ancestry kind of gives you an email and says your DNA is ready for processing or it, like it's time to activate your kit. Don't remember the steps on that now, but you hit next and then it leads you through the system. This is their help page. Any questions that you might have on any subject from your account to the testing, to the family trees, to mobile. That's another thing Ancestry has. They have a great app uh, that you can download to your phone and I can pull up my tree or my DNA anywhere I'm at, which is kind of interesting, you know, to think you can do that for $59. Oh, I wanna cover this. Here are, if you click on these, it'll give you additional information that you might want to need. All right, so this is what through lines start to look at like. And this was a snapshot in time. Um, whoops, there we go. So I have new DNA matches, I have two. I have potential ancestors, 23. I have 170 I've linked to my tree. Let me explain what that means. Let's say that you and I match DNA, okay? I'm going to go up on our match page on Ancestry, and then it gives me the ability to put you into my tree. I can put you in my tree. You're gonna be private because you're alive. And then I can determine when I do that, how we're related. We might be third cousins, we might be fourth cousins, but I can determine that because it, the ancestry tree account, if you are the original person in the tree, it's gonna say how we're related. So you don't have to think a lot. So you can see that I have a breakdown here. Now these folks are unusual. These are prime DNA candidates because one, they've taken their test, they have a tree, they've linked the, their DNA to the tree, just like I have. And Ancestry goes out and searches all that information and brings us together into through lines. This is what through lines looks like. And this is what is good and bad about through lines. So, This is a cousin, and this would be at, uh, this person is a great uncle, uh, grand uncle, I guess is what they're calling it. These are his kids going down, and these are the people that match my DNA. All right, so if you remember, this is a second cousin. This is a second cousin one time removed. You see they're like, She's another step down. They would be at the same level. This person is at the same level. And what you should notice is that the amount of DNA that this person and this person shares is pretty close. So that gives you pretty good indication that these are actual good matches. Now, you also will notice that it goes down from there. These are second cousin one time removed. And so the amount of DNA shared is going down. This person, I don't know who this person is. I do know that it comes from this line. So I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, I'm gonna throw it out to you. How, how could I find out what the name of this person is? It's a male. So how can I find that out? Any ideas? Because you're going to be faced with that for through lines. Yes.
good idea because it would be one of her children. Yeah, that would be one of her children. Can I find out that information? How could I find that out? Where could I look for that? Because obviously she's living. Okay, is it possible that an obit might tell me about this line or is this happened too far back? It's not gonna give me a good information. But what's the quickest way to figure this out? Maybe the quickest way. Gotcha. I could go to BS, send her a message on Ancestry. I could go to this person and send a message on Ancestry and see if they'd be willing to share with me the name of the person here. There's also this evaluation and that can be important clues. So you go look at that and, and it'll give you, what it does is gives you a multiple amount of family trees that have similar information. Doesn't necessarily mean that you'll find the correct answer. All right, so I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, my mom is deceased and this is my paternal sister. She's on my father's side. And so what you get is a place that you can connect your person to your tree. That's what this little symbol means. It shows you, you know, remember I said about 3,500 centimorgans equals your parents or, or um, siblings. So here we go in this range. Um, she has a tree, thanks to me. I've got a bunch of people in there and we have a common ancestor. So I can view the match and it'll bring me all that information up. I can search different ways. I can click on her and go shared matches and it'll bring me up a list of people that we share DNA together, shared DNA. That's an important tool to use. Same thing, I'm lucky that I have a paternal sister that's a half sister because I can use her to find my um, paternal side. So it's important, to, to, it's really beneficial to have half siblings. If you have half siblings, get them to test because they'll help you sort out all the rest of the DNA. All right, so here's her tree. And you can see that what we have in common is my mother. <laughs> which I think is kind of cool. But so what we're looking here at is, this is a view of the common ancestor. The screen allows us to do shared matches right here. If I hit that, it's gonna bring up all the people in my database that share DNA with my mom. So those are gonna be primary people that I can identify as being on my mother's side. I can make notes. I know that somewhere around a seventh or eighth great grandparent or maybe farther back, that there is one ancestor that my mom and my dad shared. It's showing up with, now I'm up to about three or four matches that share both with my dad's side and my mom's side. And I just haven't pinpointed the, um, I've got a pretty good idea, but I, I can't say that I've got it pinned down to a particular chromosome, but that's what I'm working on. I can use the dot grouping. I can add to my tree. I can view in my tree and I can add notes. Okay, this is what the dots look like. So let's say I was going to do a shared match with my mom. She's my maternal line. So I might wanna pick pink, and then with dots, I could code everybody that matches my mom and I in pink. And that would tell me at a glance that those are my maternal matches. So you guys can take a picture of this slide because it is things that I recommend for you, I'll get out of your way, to, to use to 
develop your knowledge base. And you're wondering why I would have an adoptee's guide to DNA testing. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. This book is very well written. It's simple to understand. And there, when there, you're going to have time when you work with DNA that you're not going to be able to figure out how that person goes into your tree. It could be a non-paternal event that you're not aware of. It could be a good match, but it just doesn't make sense how they fit. This book really helps you through all of that. It is a very good book. You don't have to be adopted to enjoy that book. Hey, did everybody get a picture of it? Okay. Now I'm ready for questions. First of all, did I confuse you? A little bit? Any questions? Yes. Okay. Um, where would you suggest a person like me has never done DNA? Where would you say to start? Let me ask you two questions. Uh -huh. Have you worked on your tree? I mean, do you have a tree? No. Okay, so do you know anything about your tree? Yeah. If, okay. Try to put together a tree. Um, there's a lot of um, software out there that you can use. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna re recommend one over the other because they all have their pluses and manages, uh, differences, including um, you know, DNA, the DNA companies. Family Tree DNA, or Family Tree Maker, uh, Roots, Roots Magic, and Legacy are three of the most well-known um, software companies that do uh, trees. But you can do the same thing on Ancestry for free. Make an account, start working on your tree, okay. get it put together. And when you first start on working on a tree, you want to use census records, and vital records. So you want to find birth certificates, marriage license, death certificates, obits, gravestones, and census records. That'll give you a good basis to go forward. Thank you. Okay. And I find, in my opinion, that ancestry is probably the easiest for beginners to get started with. But it isn't necessarily the end all to everything. Always remember that. Yes. Yeah, I always suggest to my beginners that they have one of the softwares and Ancestry because if Ancestry ever decided to change their rules, they've still got it in their software too. Yeah, That's I totally agree with you. I have I have all three of those tree companies, Legacy, Roots Magic, and Family Tree Maker. I have a tree on each of those because they give me different things. And I also have my family tree maker tree linked to Ancestry. So, and I have a tree on uh, Heritage too. They have, a, they have a system called Tree Builder. So there's a lot of places you can do this, but to get started, it's probably the easiest is Ancestry. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Got a question online. Um, okay. Is it free to move your DNA from Ancestry into other sites? Yes and no. The question is, is it free to move your DNA from Ancestry to other sites? Ancestry doesn't charge. Um, family tree DNA, their price varies anywhere from, it was $9 for a couple of weeks and then it went to 19 and I think it might be back up to 29, but it varies. You shouldn't be spending more than $29 probably at um, family tree DNA. My heritage has it does offer uh, the ability to do that. There is a I don't honestly know what the cost is right now. Um, GedMatch doesn't charge, so you can get your DNA over to that platform, which there's more tools, and I'm going to talk about that later today. So that's another place you can play. 
you cannot transfer your ancestry DNA to 23andMe. Those are both standalone companies that you have to test individually and they each offer pros and cons. Okay, any other questions? Yes. It seems that you're mixing DNA with your family tree. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you got to link. See, your DNA is your bio family. I understand that. Okay. So your family tree has to represent what your DNA is representing. And the only way to really do that is to connect your DNA to you because you're the tester on your tree. Ancestry uses that data, your tree, your DNA, and goes out with their algorithms and matches other folks that match you with DNA and have those same names in their family tree. Can you move that to another site? The tree? Yes. Yeah, you can download your ancestry tree and you want to use it as a JEDCOM. And then yes, you can you want to do by JEDCOM. So you download the ancestry tree to a JEDCOM, and then you can transfer that tree to another site. Are the formatting, is the formatting the same then? It's different, but the JCOM is like the universal language to move trees. Yes. JCOM. J G E D. Oh, G E D C O M. It's G E D C O M. JCOM. It's a standard term to describe moving a tree data to another site or downloading it to your computer. I just wanted to explain because. You never heard of that term. Glad not you asked. Everybody in the room would know what you were talking. Th thank you very much for making me clarify that okay where people also get confused is like you can download your dna from ancestry and it will be in a zip file so if you're planning on moving that dna somewhere else don't unzip that zip file leave it zipped it's easier to upload that dna and i and i honestly recommend everybody that's tested at ancestry to download their dna to a folder on their their computer and do a backup of it. Don't open it up though. It's a zip file. Because you paid for it. Yes. You made the comment to the lady over here to create a tree. Creating a tree, you only need to go back a couple of generations, mom and dad and grandparents, and you have a tree. True, but if the farther you can go back and the more information you can get, because most of your cousin matches are going to be not the grandparents, great grandparents. That's true, but then when you start trying to find birth certificates, death certificates, or any of that kind of stuff, you are deep into something that may be over your MOS when you're starting. Um, yeah, that's why I said you do a basic tree of what you know and then go from there. But um, it, if you have a where it can get tricky is if you have a surname like Smith, you know, then that can be tricky to figure out if you got the right Smith. But I've been doing this for so long and I do it for other people. And I was, I worked on the reveal in 2020. We did, I did three of the, the folks that had their reveal done and we didn't know anything about them and we put their trees together. The information's out there. It's just the skill of finding it. But again, remember that, that is up here for this lady saying she's starting here because she doesn't even have a tree. That's why I, I, my instructions to her was to get that free ancestry tree with what she knows. You know, and she said she knew her parents and grandparents. So she put that in there. And then the census records would start guiding her back. The census records can take you back about 1850. In some cases, there are exceptions to that. Any other questions? Yes. Is there ever a benefit to retesting? Like once you've done the ancestor DNA, do they keep all these things that they keep adding? Do they, is that updated automatically? Uh, I'm only gonna talk to you about ancestry because that's what this class is. Uh, if you'll notice that Ancestry was requesting additional monies to do the traits, you didn't have to supply new DNA. 
Huh? Um, when I originally did family tree DNA, which I spoke with this morning, um, I did the autosomal and the um, mtDNA, and there was enough in that one testing unit that I did with them for them to determine my autosomal and the mtDNA. On the other hand, my uncle did one test. He did, we were able to do autosomal, the mtDNA, and Y500 on that one test. His DNA has run out. And unfortunately, I was not able to get him that supplement DNA test so I could move him up to Y700, which is the top test now at Family Tree DNA. So, yes and no. You, they'll ask, they'll tell you if you need more DNA, but usually no. They're just fine tuning what they've already can see. Any other questions? Nope. No questions. So now this is, I want you to be honest. Did you learn anything today? Because if you don't learn, I'm doing something wrong and I need to change it. I spent like during COVID, I would do like every two weeks, I'd do a, a DNA class. And we spent about three months learning about ancestry. So there's, you know, I have to shortcut it for 45 minutes, but it's, but the dots do it. Don't be scared of it. There's a lot of videos out there will tell you how to use them three dots. It's actually a modified leads method. And that's all you're doing. So, all right. I, yes. I have one comment. Earlier, I heard you say this is private. Nobody sees your information. Is that correct? Yes, unless you allow them to. And and on the profile page, you you want to have your matches be able to see their matches with you and hopefully ethnicity, but they don't have to see your personal information. You can hide all that. Okay. Yep. Yes. I'm kind of going back to this morning when you spoke in regards to how cancer and cancer treatment uh, affects your DNA. So like I've had radio plaque on my eye. I've had two shots of Avastin because I have an ocular melanoma. Am I wasting my time doing? I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I would propose that question to the doctor who's giving those treatments because he knows the answer. Okay. And if he says, I'm sorry, I don't know that answer. Um, what was that site that I had to look at? Um, National Institute of Health. NIH.gov? Yeah, National Institute of Health. NIH.gov is where I go to get questions that I can't answer. And a medical one would be that. Okay. Great, thank you. But I'd go back to the doctor that did the original, um, you know, materials with you and see it, if that would affect your DNA. Yeah, yeah. I know. I have some D uh, DNA tests done. Uh, they took, you know, DNA samples uh, to check on, oh, what chromosomes this is affecting and how, uh, what the percentages are of occurring somewhere else in my body. And you might so look into 23andMe and, and just, and me. yeah, because their whole focus has always been about medical research. Okay. You know, and, and that's a good thing to know. Um, I think the, the, what, okay, ancestry is a love-hate. There's no way around it. Okay, I love it and I hate it, depending on which day I'm working with them. All right, the, the thing that ancestry does well is the 22 million testers um, and the amount of people that are interested in building trees that can help you solve 
your your tree, your tree problems, or at least it gives you hints, right? So no other site does that. No other site has 22 million. No other sites have the amount of family trees that people have put out there. So that in itself is a wonderful tool. They have also starting to add really cool tools to play with. Now, the one thing they don't have is you'll never be able to find an X match on Ancestry. They don't do that. They don't do chromosome breakdown of your autosomal. You will not find that. You will not find Y DNA or, or MT DNA here. It's strictly autosomal. You know, all of your cousins going back to about fifth grade grandparents. And the amount of DNA that I recommend when you first start, if you can, is limited to about 20 centimorgans. If somebody shares less than 20 centimorgans, put them aside. <clears throat> Work on the ones that are 20 centimorgans or above. It used to be that all the experts said seven centimorgans. A few years back, it went up to eight. And a few years back, it went up to 10. GEDmatch went to, I think GEDmatch is still at seven, but they went up to 10. All of the researchers I follow now, they're all up at 20. Your, your matches are going to be 20. They have learned enough about autosomal DNA that if somebody matches you, let's say 15 centimorgans, and it's over two segments, that could very well be a 10th or 12th cousin, the way DNA is uh, passed down. So it might not be worth your time. Your time has to be valuable. So 20 centimorgans is where I really look. Once in a while, I have to break my rule, but for the most part, that's where I go. Any other questions? I wanna thank you guys. Thank you. It's been enjoyable with you.